let us consider the cause of asthma. In these five clinical studies, it was discovered that people with asthma breathe about two, two point half times more air than the medical norm. These are details of these studies. It's important to notice that people can breathe two, three times more air than the medical norm and be unaware that their breathing is way too heavy. In relation to asthma, the effects of hyperventilation are going to be following. When people hyperventilate, they have low level of CO2 in their airways. And CO2, according to clinical studies, is very powerful, some studies say most powerful, known relaxant of smooth muscles. Therefore, CO2 is dilator of airways. And when people hyperventilate, they suffer from bronchoconstriction. So this is exactly the case with people with asthma. Bronchoconstriction is one of the three central factors which defines asthma. Therefore, it's obvious that heavy breathing, which was found in virtually all asthmatics, is the cause of the bronchoconstriction or constriction of airways. Hyperventilation reduces oxygen level in body cells. Let us look at this brain image. When people hyperventilate, they have low CO2, and CO2 is also a dilator of blood vessels. Therefore, hyperventilation causes vasoconstriction, constriction of blood vessels, due to reduction of CO2 in the arterial blood. Therefore, asthmatics are going to suffer from low oxygen level. If asthmatics have too heavy breathing for a long time, they start to destroy the airways and alveoli, and that causes reduction in oxygen transport in the lungs, and we develop so-called ventilation perfusion mismatch. As a result of low oxygen level, the immune system becomes suppressed, and it also becomes hypersensitive to innocent triggers. Therefore, it's normal that asthmatics, due to their hyperventilation, develop allergies and sensitivities to dust mites, cat and dog proteins found in air, smoke, and many other chemicals. Because of this hypersensitivity of the immune system, asthmatics develop inflammation of airways. This also involves production of extra mucus. As we can see, that overbreathing leads to all symptoms of asthma. And therefore, hyperventilation is the key cause of asthma. In order to prove this statement, we need to consider the effects of those breathing techniques which are able to eliminate hyperventilation. So what are the methods of treatment for asthma? One of the techniques is called the Buteyka breathing method, and it was investigated in six published clinical randomized trials. These trials found that asthmatics are able to eliminate the use of bronchodilators in about three months of time by 90%. That means we are going to use 10 times less medication if we are talking about a large group of asthmatics if they practice breathing exercises. And the goal of these breathing exercises is to slow down the breathing pattern back to the medical norm and increase body oxygenation. I'm not just talking about practicing some breathing exercises. What is important in case of asthma and some other chronic diseases is to slow down so-called automatic or unconscious breathing pattern back to the medical norm. So you can imagine it's quite a difficult challenge because the person needs to adjust or maybe change many lifestyle risk factors that relates to sleep, physical exercise, diet, and many other. Therefore, asthma has a simple cause and it also has a proven clinical treatment. Apart from the Buteyka method, there is another breathing technique which is based on the application of the Frolov breathing device. So this technique was also tested but only in Russian clinical trials so far. And Russian doctors, because the Frolov device is endorsed and suggested to their patients by about 600 doctors in Russia right now, these Russian doctors discovered that Frolov breathing device also produces effect on, on the breathing center and allows to slow down breathing pattern closer to the medical norm. In practical terms, it is not easy to measure breathing and body oxygenation, we require special devices. But there is a simple test, which is called body oxygen test. And this test has a very good correlations 
with symptoms of asthma. For example, the normal result for the body oxygen test is 40 seconds. People with asthma, and since I'm practicing and teaching the Buteyka breathing method, I know that we have around 15 seconds only. People with severe asthma around 10 seconds. And when we start to practice breathing exercises and do lifestyle changes, we gradually improve the body oxygenation. When we achieve about 25 seconds, we usually do not require any medication. We are able to stop asthma attacks with breathing exercise. This is one factor. And another factor is that as soon as we maintain the body oxygenation and breathing at certain level, we are not going to experience any asthma attacks. Of course, we need to avoid triggers because triggers make them hyperventilate. If this asthmatics continue to slow down the automatic breathing pattern, we are able to further increase the body oxygenation. And if we achieve about 35-40 seconds, then these asthmatics are able to restore the airways. Unfortunately, only a very small number of asthmatics are able to reach this goal because it's really difficult to achieve 40 seconds for the body oxygen test 24 hours per day. But those asthmatics who manage to achieve this goal and maintain this level for one or two months time are able to eliminate inflammation of airways. And then the parameters of lung function test are going to be normal as well. In order to find out more about this proven treatment of asthma and what are the required steps in order to improve body oxygenation and slow down breathing, you can visit web pages of the website normalbreathing.com.